tidal streams and the flow of tide. We've worked out high to tide, now we want to work out the flow of tide. That's the tide on the surface, the direction and speed of the water. Really important to know because we can use this to make the water take us to the destination we want. Some places the tide is so strong that we wouldn't get through um, against the tide, such as the Gulf of Corrie Reckon or the Alderney Race just by Sherberg. So the tidal stream atlas, most are based on the time of high water at a standard port, and we've talked about standard ports. The atlas shows a chart of the tide for one to six hours before high water and one to six hours after high water. 13 charts in all, including a chart for high water. The Admiralty produced tidal stream atlases uh, for waters in and around the UK, and if we can see there in the chart of the UK, we can see the details of the tidal stream atlases around the UK. And if we take the one by Sherberg, which shows us quite a large area, and the arrows are going in the direction of the tide at that time. The bigger the arrow, the stronger the tide. So if we look in detail, we can see the big arrows with the strong tide, and the smaller arrows with less such a strong tide, and we can see that these arrows going past the Sherberg Peninsula and Alderney. And in springs it's showing 9.7, which is 9.7 knots or nautical miles per hour of tide going through the gap. The atlases are based on a standard port. This one uses Dover. A lot of the Admiralty Tidal Stream atlases will use Dover as their reference point. So to find out where your reference point is, look at the top of the Tidal Stream Atlas and it will tell you at the top. And this is what we have to reference our Tidal Stream Atlas from. The ones you're going to use will be the RYA Training Almanac. Everything in there is referenced off Victoria. So when you use a Tidal Stream Atlas or Tidal Diamonds, everything is referenced off Victoria. So here's um, a Yachtsman's one and an Admiralty one. It's the same information, just laid out slightly different. So we can get Yachtsman's one, the Tidal Stream Atlas. Um, there's a particular one of the uh, called Winning Tides, uh, which is really useful if you're racing around the Isle of Wight, and it shows the tides in intricate detail every half an hour around the Isle of Wight. So the Tidal Stream Atlas in your training almanac there'll be one for six to one hours before high water, high water, and one to six hours after high water. When you look at the, uh, the Tidal Stream Atlas on the left-hand side of the page here, it looks exactly like RYA Chart 3. So it's Chart 3 on an A4 size, and at the top it will tell you how many hours before or after or if it's high water Victoria. So in this diagram here, it says two hours after high water Victoria. And the arrows show the direction of the tide. And there's two small numbers next to the arrows. So if we look going into Namley Harbour here, it says 04.06. This is written to simplify. What it means is at neat tides, it's coming out of here at 0 0.4 knots, at spring tides it's coming out of here at 0 0.6 knots and the tide is going south. And that's at two hours after high water Victoria. So what we need to do, we need to find the page which is referenced for the time that we want to know and it would tell us the direction of tide for the whole of our VA chart 3 for that hour. So on chart 3 and 4, all tidal stream data refer to the standard port, Victoria. And it's written in red on top of the tidal stream atlas, and it's written above the tidal diamonds. But I'll say that again. All tidal stream data on our course, on the ROA charts, are referenced from Victoria. And there it is on top of the page, circled. I know I go into this into quite a lot, but... You will make the mistake once and go to the nearest harbour and not Victoria and the answers will never be right if you do that. 
So tides have set, which is the direction of the tide, and drift, which is the speed of the tide. And it says there, the larger number will be the spring, the smaller number will be the neaps. So again, that is 0 0.8 and 1.6. It isn't 8 knots and 16 knots, otherwise the tide will be going rather fast. They don't put the decimal in, otherwise the tidal stream atlas gets cluttered. We can put our plotter directly next to the arrow. So the big arrow on our plotter going in the same arrow as the um, tidal stream arrow and the little arrow on our plotter goes directly north. So we m move the, uh, the dial around the middle and we can read off on our plotter the direction of the tide. And we can put that straight onto our chart when we're doing calculations later. Tidal diamonds. If we don't have a tidal stream atlas, we may use a tidal diamond. So again, all tidal diamonds um, are referenced to the standard port Victoria for the RWA exercises that we're going to do. So if we look at a tidal diamond, there's one there just off Dungeness. Um, it's marked there in a diamond with the letter E. And it doesn't show the tidal flow and eddies near the diamond. It tells you what's happening with the tide at the diamond. And it's the same with the uh, tidal stream atlas on the arrows. It marks the direction and speed of the tide. Out of interest, this information has come from a data boy. It recalls the tide over quite a long time and it gives the data at that pinpoint position. So it doesn't account for tidal flow and eddies near the diamond. So if we look at the top of RWA chart 3, there's a box there at the top and that will give us the tidal diamonds. So tidal diamond, top of chart three, um, and it shows here tidal diamond C, it gives the position, latitude and longitude, and it also says high water here, and that's the direction of the tide at high water, 010, 0 0.9 for springs, 0.5 for neaps. And as we go minus one hour, two hours, three hours, up to six, gives the direction and the speed. And plus one to six, it goes, it gives us the, the direction and the speed. And that's what I've just explained. So if we were looking for three hours before high water, high water minus three, the direction would be 297, 1.4 for springs, 0.7 for neaps. And again, it's all referenced off Victoria and it says at the top of the diamonds that it is referenced from Victoria. Tidal flow. Let's have a look in our training almanac. And if we look towards the front of the almanac, we'll find the tidal stream atlas. So if we go to high water Victoria, which is on page 19 of your training almanac, you will see that this represents the whole of RWA chart 3. So even though if we are navigating in, say, Colville, we still have to take the, informa the information from Victoria, because it says Victoria at the top of the page. So if high water Victoria was at 1,200, then that would logically tell me that one hour before high water Victoria here, this would be... 1100. So at 1100, we'd look at the chart here and we'd take all these arrows and the direction is the direction of the tide and the bigger the arrow, the more the tide is. So this would be 1100 and this would be 1200. So the question is, when do we stop looking at the page at 1100 and start looking at the page at 1200? The logic would be halfway between them, and halfway between 11 and 12 in the middle here would be 11.30. So when do we stop looking at the 12 and start looking at the 1300, which is overleaf? Well, that would be 12.30. So when we look at a page, the information is good from half an hour before to half an hour after.
If you're struggling with this, when you do the first few questions, get a pencil, put the hour mark at the top, and put half an hour before in the corner here, half an hour after in the corner here, and as you turn over, it will give you all the times. So when you go and do your practical, and they'll say, can you mark up the tidal stream atlas, you find high water Victoria, or if you're on the Solent, it'd be high water Portsmouth, or if you've got an Abbotty Tidal Stream Atlas, it'll be high water Dover, and you put the time in there in high water, and you mark it, minus one hour that side, and as you turn over the page, it'll be plus one hour, plus two hours, plus three, plus four, and so on. But the main point of this is to say that it goes from half an hour before to half an hour after. We've just looked at a tidal stream atlas. We've said if the high water is at midday, we'd look at this page here from 11.30 to 12.30. If we're trying to work out during the day the direction and speed of the tide, when we first work it out, I suggest you get a blank piece of paper like this and you put your high water in the middle. High water, 1200. And as we said before, that information is good from 11.30 to 12.30. If we put a couple of the other tides in, say higher water minus one, higher water minus two, higher water minus three, and go the other way, higher water plus one, higher water plus two, higher water plus three, maybe 12 plus one, 1300, 1400, 1500 going back, 1100, 1000, 0900, and we mark in the half hours, so that would be good from 1230 to 1330, and that would be good from 1330 to 1430, and that would be good from 1430 to 1530, and the same above, so that would be good from 1030. Zero nine thirty, zero eight thirty. So we can look if we do the whole six hours before and six hours after for any time during the day. We can find the time here and say the time was nine twenty. We could look at nine twenty, and we know that that would reference to high water minus three. So it'll either be high water minus three here, it reference from here. So the advantage of doing this on here and work out which one it is, we can work out either in a tidal stream atlas like this or with a tidal diamond. So the best way to consolidate this is to do a worked example. So the question here will be what is the tidal set and drift, which is direction and speed, on Wednesday the 5th of June between South Douglas Island and the Farlow River? starting at 14.30 and for one hour. So that would be between 14.30 and 15.30. So we need to find out where we are. So if we look at the top of our way A chart three, on the right hand side, where it's circled with the red box. So we need to work out the tidal height for the time that we're asked. So if we go to the Victoria, because it's tidal flow, Victoria tide table for Wednesday the 5th of June. The low water is at 12.30, 1.8, and the high water is at 1900, 4.4. But we'd have to add an hour for daylight saving, so it would be 13.30, low water 1.8, and 2000 hours, 4.4. But the time we asked for is 14.30 and it fits between the low water of 12.30 and the high water of 1900. So we use the high water of 1900, which as I said before, we add the hour for daylight saving for the non-shaded areas. And if you look at the top left hand of your page, it will explain that in the, uh, the tie tables for the non-shaded areas, add one hour. Or summertime or daylight saving time. 
Is it a spring or neap tide? To find out if it's a spring or neap tide, you calculate the range. And just to recap, the range is the difference between the high water and the low water. So you take the high water height minus the low water, that will give you the range of the tide. And I've just explained that. So the range of this tide, the high water is 4.4, the low water is 1.8, so 4.4 minus 1.8 is 2.6. We then go to the tidal curve, ignore the tidal curve, go to the top right where it says mean ranges. Springs, 4.9, neeps, 2.4. If we go back to our range, 2.6, it's closest to NEEPS, so we take it from the NEEPS. And this is page 36 of your training almanac. So if we put in the high water time, 20 hundred hours, and from our diagram before, high water minus 1, 19, high water minus 2, 18, high water minus 3, 17, high water minus 4, 16, high water minus 5, 15, high water minus 6, 14, split them all up into half hours and we'll find our time will be 1430 to 1530 follow that back it's high water minus five at this point I need to urge you to take a blank piece of paper in the middle of the paper write the high water the time and go minus or plus depending on the question write it out split each one individually and then have a look it makes it so much easier it's very easy to slip an hour and get it wrong if you rush it so take your time write it out do it properly the time starts at 1430 and time as you know moves on so we're looking between 1430 and 1530 which is the whole of this time gap which is the whole of high water minus five so now we have the high water minus five we can either go to the Tidal Diamond or we can go to the Tidal Stream Atlas. In the question, it asks us to go to the Tidal Diamond. When you do the RBA exercises, it will say in the question whether to use the Tidal Stream Atlas or the Tidal Diamond. So here will be the Tidal Diamond. So the Tidal Diamond is in the middle of the sound of Farlow Channel and it's Tidal Diamond C. So we go to the top of the chart tidal diamond C and it's high water minus five so maybe worth putting the plotter on here so we don't drop one or skip up one high water minus five look along it will give you the direction of the tide in true the speed of the tide the big number will be springs small number in neeps so 192 so it's just it's near to south um, Tides go to, so that'd be a south going tide. A good phrase to know and remember is winds comes from, tide goes to. So that tide will be heading south 192 degrees. So if we're using that on the chart, we can put 192 on our plotter. Big arrow in the direction we're going at 192 and the little arrows up to the top of the chart and that will give the line 192. And we're asking for high water minus five and we worked out it was neat tides. So the direction will be 192, speed of the tide 0.6 knots.